Hi, Daryl from Golden Spiral Media here today with another video product demonstration for you. Today I have the Audio Technica AT2005 USB microphone. Now you may have checked out the video that I did a couple of months ago that was a comparison between the Heil PR40 microphone, the Shure SM58 microphone, and the Audio Technica ATR2100 microphone. And as I mentioned in that video, the Audio Technica ATR2100 has been going up in price. When I first purchased mine last year, it was around $30. And at the time I did my video, they were around $50, and they're still around that price, although I've seen them as much as $70. So that $50 to $70 range seems to be the current market price for the ATR2100. Now, as I'm continuing to add hosts to Golden Spiral Media, I need to add microphones into the mix, and I recently came into a situation where I needed to add another microphone to our studio. And with the price of the ATR2100 up between $50 and $70, for me that added it into a different competitive range and I began to look at other microphones. And what I landed on was the AT2005 from Audio-Technica. So this is what it looks like outside of the box. And it's a direct competitor to the ATR2100. So I'm going to talk about some of the similarities and the differences between these two microphones. Let me tell you, besides the microphone, what you get in the box is a USB cable. On one end is a standard USB connection, and on the other end is a uh, mini USB connector that will connect your microphone to your computer. Of course, it also has an XLR plug, and I'll show that in just a minute. It also comes with this little mini tripod microphone mount. And uh, you'll see it here in a minute, but I'll just go ahead and bring it over here. It also comes with a microphone clip that you can attach to either a standard microphone uh, uh, stand or the microphone tripod that comes with the kit. And it comes with an XLR cable as well. So it comes with everything you need to connect the AT2005 to either a computer or a mixing board. So it really is a well-equipped package. So let me compare these two microphones physically here for just a moment. I mean, you can obviously the, the, see the, the matte black finish here on the AT2005 compared to the silver finish of the ATR2100. And the ATR2100 has the rounded screen on there, and the AT2005 has the flat screen on there and I prefer the, the look of this to me this gives a much more professional look than this one does but most podcasters aren't doing their podcast in a place where people can see them doing their show so frankly the look of the microphone won't matter for most cases and this doesn't have a bad look either they both have an on off switch and underneath the microphones you'll see they both have the XLR connection and they both have the USB connection. In addition, they both have a 3.5 millimeter headphone connection so that you can monitor your voice while you use the microphone. And there is a rocker knob on the bottom of each microphone so that you can turn your monitoring volume up or down in the headphones when they're connected to that 3.5 millimeter jack. Um, so yeah, besides the physical differences in the microphones, as far as I can tell, they're actually identical. Both microphones are a dynamic microphone. I'll talk about that in just a moment. They also both deliver a cardioid pattern, a polar pattern. So that means it's going to pick up uh, signals from around the top of the microphone. This is your sweet spot. It will still pick up some sound to the side of the microphone, canceling noise that, and sounds that come from the back side of the microphone. And that's a regular, that's a standard regular cardioid polar pattern for, um, for dynamic microphones. Mo most microphones are going to have that pattern. Um, in addition to that, both microphones have a 50 to 15,000 hertz frequency response, and both microphones deliver the 44.1 to 48 kilohertz sample rate at 16-bit depth. So internally, with the specifications that they deliver, they seem to be completely identical. The only difference I can find in these two microphones is with the warranty. The AT2005 comes with a limited one-year warranty. The ATR2100 comes with a limited lifetime warranty. So, winner ATR2100 with the warranty. 
that's really the only difference I can find, as I said. Uh, price-wise, the, the suggested retail price on the AT2005 is $149, whereas the suggested retail price on the ATR2100 is $90. So there's a difference in suggested retail, but what's the actual retail today? And this is really changing by the day. I did this video yesterday and wasn't satisfied with the way it turned out, so I'm reshooting it today. And in that one day, the prices have changed. Yesterday, I could have purchased this microphone, the AT2005, on B&H Video for $49. And that's what I paid for it when I purchased it about a week ago. Today, it's gone up to $55, so it's raised about $5 in price. On Amazon, the AT2005 currently is $50. The ATR2100 on Amazon currently $70. On B&H, $57. So this is ranging $57 to $70. This is ranging $50 to $55. So overall, this seems to be a better deal. So let's give it a listen. I'm going to plug it in. So I'm going to cut the video here, plug the microphone in so that you can listen to what it sounds like. So far, all of the audio in this video has been um, coming in through a condenser mic that I have right above me, right off camera. It's the HTDZ HT81 condenser microphone. I have a video for that. I will post the link for the HTDZ HT81 microphone in the description below on this video, as well as that comparison video that I did between the High LPR40, the Shure SM58, and the Audio Technica ATR2100 so that you can easily find both of those videos. But for now, let me plug this microphone in and we'll get to uh, hear what it sounds like. All right, now I have the AT2005 USB microphone connected here, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute the HTDZ HT81 microphone that is right above me. And so from, you'll be able to clearly tell the difference between the two microphones. And from here on out, the audio that you hear will be the AT2005 USB microphone. Okay. Here we are as I smash my chin with the microphone. The thing is, this is a, a pretty light microphone, which is not a bad thing. And this boom arm, I'm on a bar stool right now, and the boom arm is at a higher angle than it normally would. So it's wanting to rise on me. So I'm just gonna keep my arm here on the, on the side of the microphone stand to keep the microphone here in front of my mouth. Now, as I mentioned, this is a dynamic microphone. The difference between a dynamic and a condenser microphone clearly illustrated in this video the condenser microphone is able to stay away from my mouth and still pick up my sound really well, whereas this dynamic microphone needs to be relatively close to my mouth in order to pick up the sound quality that I would desire. But there are also benefits from both of these styles of microphones. And for most podcasters, I recommend a dynamic style microphone. Yes, you do need to have it closer to your mouth in order to achieve optimal sound. However, a condenser microphone is much more sensitive and most podcasters are not set up to record in a soundproof area or a professional studio. I have sound dampening um, um, treatments on my walls, as you can see, some of them right here behind me. And I've done other things here in my studio to try to eliminate as much extra noise as possible. And so I can get away with using a condenser microphone that's not right by my mouth. Uh, however, I don't think most podcasters are set up to do that. And so I recommend a dynamic microphone. You can have it close to your mouth, achieve really high quality sound, and it's not going to pick up as much of the other noise in the room. Noises like your voice echoing off the wall, a clock ticking on the, on the wall, or even air conditioner or ambient noise cars driving by. Those are the types of things that would be picked up by a condenser microphone, but would not be picked up by a dynamic microphone. And again, the drawback is, if you want to call it a drawback, you need to have that dynamic microphone pretty close to your mouth. I would say no more than six inches away from your mouth. Right now, I probably have it about two inches away from my mouth. So by now, you've been able to hear the sound quality of the AT2005 USB microphone. It has the on-off switch here. As I mentioned, it's connected Excuse me, via a... XLR cable right here. It's going into my mixer for this demonstration. I'm using the exact same mixer that I used in my comparison video for the High LPR40, the Shure SM58, and the ATR2100. And that is the Mac Mackie 802 VLZ3 
mixer. Now, the current model is the 802VLZ4 if you want to pick up the current Mackie mixer in that line. It's a great mixer. So there you have it. This is has been my audio demonstration of the AT2005 USB microphone from Audio-Technica. I think it's a fantastic microphone. As long as it stays in this price range, I would choose it over the Audio-Technica ATR2100 simply because I like the look of it. And when I use this microphone, it's because I'm traveling most of the time and I am doing it in a public way. And hey, I want to have, I want to look good while I'm podcasting and I want to have the best looking mic as possible. But really, either microphone is fantastic. I am not down on the ATR2100 at all. I think they are both fantastic microphones and podcasters will love them. So thanks for watching this video. And until next time, take care.